You know, I've been aware for some time there's a type of fishing that's right on my doorstep that I simply don't do, which, let's face it, is a little bit silly. You know me, I love my river fishing, but there are places like this place, this is Diva Springs in Hampshire, where small sill waters hold some exceptional fish and some amazing sport. So today, I've come along to have a go with an angler who's absolutely brilliant at this type of thing. Now that angler is Peter Cockwill, and I can't wait to see if we can get you to see one of these fantastic trophy fish. Peter, that's a big fish. <laughs> Just a wooden one. <laughs> <laughs> but I've had a little wander round and looked in at one or two of the stock ponds and we've seen a few interesting looking shapes moving around. Mm -hmm. This place is a little bit special, isn't it? Yeah, we've got some exceptional fish here. But you know, that's what makes Diva Springs what it is. How have you ended up here? Because I mean, you know, I know you as being an angler that's caught some seriously big fish all around the world. I just think it's a great irony that here you are at a place like Diva with these creatures swimming around. Well, I've always loved this place and um, yeah, it's strange how, how life turns around, isn't it? But an opportunity came when I shut my shop um, that there was a job here part-time and I thought, hey, why not? Busman's holiday. Yeah, I love it. Do you know, for me, that what this is like is kind of, if you were a golfer, you'd turn up at, say, a golf course and discover that Tiger Woods was the pro. <laughs> and I know, you know, we sort of talk about your, your history with catching big fish. I know you love your grayling fishing, but I've seen you with some enormous trout from all over the place. What is it you love about that sort of fishing? I think it's a clear water thing as much as anything. You know, I still get such a buzz out of seeing a fish take the fly. What do you think our prospects are of seeing one of these enormous trout? Oh, we're going to see them because the water is dead clear. Um, so yeah, whether you can catch it, that's down to you. <laughs> <laughs> well, down to you. See, the good thing about this is, as you're the guide, if it goes wrong, I can it's blame you. It's my fault. Yeah, quite. Yeah, seems fair. So um, let's get ourselves going. Let's get our rod set up, have a little potter around and see if we can get one of these fish. Sure. Let's go. So Peter, we've got rods in hand. We've wandered over to the separate part of the fishery. This is a different lake to the one we were on a minute ago. The this wind's is dropped, Spring Lake, yeah. yes. And the wind's easier here because it's blocked by that huge patch of poplar trees, so it just makes it a little more sheltered. I can hear there's a stock pond behind us, mm -hmm. and I can hear one or two, what are very obviously quite serious fish crashing. This yeah. is very exciting. Well, it's nearly feeding time, so whatever you do, don't go in there and fall in. <laughs> <laughs> Bye. <laughs> They're like piranhas. What are our, our tactics today? Because, you know, we're looking at some serious creatures here, um, you know, and, and I can't pretend that I'm not a little bit nervous about this. Um, so what, what's the approach? How do we, we go about it? We use these things, Polaroids, and we're going to try and see, try and find a big fish by sight um, right. because this water is dead clear at the moment and uh, we can walk around and just try to find one. Don't always find them. They're smart, these things, and they just disappear for, sometimes for months on end. Really? You know, we rear these fabulous fish and put them in and they will just disappear. Having had a little pot around and looking at some of the you know, the, the stock ponds and where the fish are being raised. Some fascinating creatures in mm -hmm. there. Well, we try for a, like a six pound, six pound plus average overall. Right. And, um, but there are exceptional sized fish in, and that's what we're looking for. If things go well today, what's our kind of best prospect? What are we looking at? Got every chance of finding a brown well into double figures, and um, certainly rainbows into the high doubles. We just uh, got to get lucky and find one. <laughs> so we're talking double figure brown trout, double figure rainbow trout in a small still water. Right. Yeah. <laughs> Engine's now running. Come on people, let's go fishing. Okay, let's go. <laughs> okay. Do you know what I find really interesting? You've been doing this a long time, but it still gets you going, doesn't oh, it? Oh yeah. It's still, yeah. <laughs> and for, for, that tells you an awful lot, I think, for someone who's been where you've been, all over the world, catching giant grayling, holding world records, all that sort of stuff. The fact that you can come to a fishery like this and it still gets you going is, is just says an awful lot. And it really close in, look. Yeah, I mean, I just, I just love it, this, this whole fishing thing. Oh, I can actually see that, oh, he's turned. He turned. Just had a little turn then. Lift the fly a little bit, lift it, lift it. Oh, he gave you a good look, oh, didn't he? he did have a look, <laughs> have a look. <laughs> 
Watch out, steady, steady. <laughs> and then a different fish, a different, a bigger one. Oh my lord, look at the size of that. It's like a submarine. Okay, we've got to change tactics here. Ooh. So the scary bit is throwing it into the, the white water that you can't quite see down mm -hmm. in, isn't it? And you know, they're obviously cruising around in a little patrol route, as yeah, you say. Yeah. But I can't actually see now if one takes, so I'm going to have to watch the end of the line. But whether that's sensitive enough to get the take. They will take it and reject it, and your line quite likely won't move. Oh. See, with, with, it isn't the greatest light today. So under these circumstances, what I would probably do is to make sure my fly is only in this tight bit here where I can actually see, not necessarily see the fly, but know exactly where it is. And then I'll be watching the fish. Right, and then you um, get that old mouth opening yeah, and closing. I know, I know where my fly is with these little weighted patterns, but I, and I can't usually see it if it's nine, ten feet down, but I can see the fish. Yeah. So I know at what depth my fly should be. So I'll tr I'm trying to make it move to in the right position for the fish, but I'm watching the fish. The times that's happened to me where the light changes or something, or a little ripple appears on the water, Just when and you, you lose sight it. of the fish, the next time you see him, he's going <laughs> with your fly. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> it's very difficult to apply our logic to the fish that we're trying to catch, because they don't see things or logically see things the way we do. I suppose it's like colour as well, isn't it? We know that fish will adapt to certain colours. We'll, you know, take an orange fly sometimes mm -hmm. and a purple one another time. Yeah, well, fish see colours, no doubt about that. But we're not sure how they see them. They certainly don't see it the way we do. Or don't well, I think. don't know so much. I mean, I, you know, I fish abroad a lot. I take people to Alaska every year. There's a big fish again. And let's say, that, for example, the sockeye salmon comes into the river brilliant silver very, very quickly changes colour until he's bright pillar box red with a green head. Well, why would he do that then? Yeah. He's doing that to look pretty to the girls, isn't he? Yeah. So, so they must see colour. Yeah. Well, I've managed to hook a creature. Look at the white edges on and the And it fins. is a creature. Yeah, isn't that beautiful? Wow, so this is, this is a different species. This is, we're trying to catch rainbows and, and browns in here, and these things cruising around a spartic trout. Explain to me what that is, Peter. It's a man-made cross between an arctic char and a brook trout, both of which are char, um, but all char have white edges on the belly fins. That's their defining feature. And these crosses are made in Poland and Denmark, and brought over as fertilised eggs, and then grown on in this country. And um, We've been trying to get these spartics to be, well, see what we can do with them. And this is about one of the biggest I've seen. Oh my Lord. <laughs> I'll tell you what, let's not beat about the bush. This yeah. thing's enormous. <laughs> so uh, we now come to the point was, would you trust me with a net? <laughs> I'd trust you with a net. I think you've done it before once or twice. <laughs> I, I think this has got a little way to go. Oh yeah, you? you're not ready yet. Um, you know, this is a seriously big fish. Oh, well. Mm, uh, maybe coming. Maybe. Maybe. So I'm adopting the sort of approach oh, here. Yeah, we're okay. The yeah. harder that I pull, the harder it pulls. Oh, yeah. Oh. Don't get me wet. It's not quite ready yet. Don't want to snatch at it. But Peter Cockwell. Oh, my goodness. Has just landed. An enormous fish. That's huge, oh, Peter. It is. It's gigantic. That is fantastic. <laughs> well, that is a Spartic trout. Yep. I've never caught one of those before. It's one of the most stunning creatures I think I've ever seen as a fly angler. What an amazing achievement. They have this like brook trout spots where you've got these little... They're pink, aren't they? Yeah, little pinky spots circled with white, circled with blue. 
Um, and then, you know, these white edges on the fins. What a fabulous fish. Well, thank you. I just, <laughs> I'm slightly speechless, I've got to say. What sort of size are we saying that is? That's 11, 12 pounds. Good God. Yeah. 11 or 12 pound trout in the net. 11 or 12 pounds. That's, uh, that's amazing. Look at this thing. That is the biggest trout I've ever seen. Thank you to Peter Cockwell for bringing me here to show me this extraordinary venue and this extraordinary creature. That's got to be 12 pounds, you know. It's a serious piece of kit. Fabulous fight. I'm only using a five weight, so really lightweight outfit with this sort of fishing. Look at the paddle on it. Unbelievable. I'm blown away. I want more. Why haven't I done this before? I must be mad. Incredible. Just incredible. Well, we need to weigh this creature because it's enormous and for this species it really is quite a special fish. So Stuart is next to me, has zeroed the scales to the net. If I pass that over to you Stuart, yeah. put it down actually because if I do it's going to break the net because it's so big. Whoa. That is 11 pounds. Uh, 11 ounce? No, because that's a 12 Ooh. ounce mark, isn't it, there? So it's 11, it's 11, 15. 11 pounds, 15 ounces. So it's an ounce under 12 pounds. Yeah. 11 pounds, 15 ounces. That is it, isn't it? Mm. Well, I said it was twelve pound. I wasn't far away. Not was bad. I? Thank That's you, a pretty good guess. <laughs> Extraordinary creature. I'm absolutely blown away. And Stuart. the take was almost in slow motion. So one of the most incredible things about this whole process was we were seeing this a rod length out. Yeah. Peter had yeah. just changed fly, put on a little white stalking bug. So we'd seen fish react to a little black bug. Then we put an olive one on. They didn't really react to that at all. So Peter got a little white one out of his box just twitched it back a little bit. This fish turned up, followed it, really slow take, set the hook and off it went. And it's just an extraordinary creature. Now the guys here are saying that this is possibly one of the biggest sparktic trout that's ever been caught. What a privilege. What an extraordinary experience and what a brilliant venue. Just incredible. Well, we had a little bit of a move round. I don't know how I'm ever going to follow that spark tick, Peter, because that was, in all honesty, fish of a lifetime territory, wasn't it? Oh, without a doubt, yeah, yeah. You were saying a few minutes ago that's probably the biggest one of the, that species that's ever been caught in the UK? Yes, without a doubt. And um, it, it was certainly the biggest I've seen, and there's enormous credit to Stuart for having reared the, the fish. Quite right. it's, it's phenomenal. So we've moved around onto one of the other platforms because we saw a few other fish because what we've got in here is the opportunity to obviously catch fish like that incredible spark tick but there are big rainbows and big browns and earlier on when we had a little walk around we saw a really big rainbow cruising around. The light's not doing us any favours at the moment but we're just trying to spot a fish and see if we can see one. What are our chances, do you think? Well, you just got to be very, very patient sometimes like this and just wait and wait and wait. It's, I know it's frustrating, Pe people want to cast, 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 <laughs> but it really pays to wait if you're after a target special fish until the fish is in the right spot and then try it. What we can use is the light to our advantage. At the moment we've got this quite glary ripple on the surface with a, a slight breeze. So this bright bit of water in front of us, I can't see anything into it. No. But if you look a bit beyond it to where the shadow is of the trees on the far bank and stuff, I can see into that dark water. So I use those places to try to find the target fish that we're looking for. And uh, it just gives you that advantage of trying to pick a fish out. Yeah, I think we ought to take another little wander, Andy. by this. 
Captain so Beckett. beautifully clear. Just love the fact that this man spent a lifetime chasing yeah. big fish all yeah. over the world. And here we are at Diva Springs in Hampshire. And he's concentrating as hard as he's ever concentrated for any fish anywhere. Brilliant. No, Andy. Yes. There he is, isn't he? Oh, yes, I got See? him. I got him. Yeah. Oh, he's got good eyes, this guy. Oh, look, the wind's slightly kicked behind it over. him, aren't you? Oh, yeah. yeah no, 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 he's seen you. Oh, then the wind comes again. And you can't see whether he's following or not? No. Well, let's just hope he is. And watch the end of the fly line like a hawk. That was him again, there wasn't it? It was, yeah. yeah. Just for sort of like five seconds, he was there. Yeah. And then the and wind the, got and up. Did you see that boil on the surface, Like He did go for you. See it? Oh. He's pointing at you. Ooh, he landed right on him. That didn't spook him. So you've got to retrieve it over the top of him. Will he see it? Come on, come on, come on. Oh, did he move then? He's, he's moved turned, away. He's, he's turned, turned, he's, he's turned, seen turned, it, he's seen it. Go on, go on. Go on, take it. Oh, he's underneath it. Keep, keep oh, following, Lord. keep following. <gasps> oh, 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 oh. <laughs> <laughs> he's disappeared and I'm nervous yeah, where he's, right he's gone. Here. He's right here, close in, going to the right. That fish give, is give colossal. Him, yeah, give him, give him a break colossal. before you cast at him again. Let him, let him relax. <laughs> and you relax. <laughs> so this is the, the whole joy of this is kind of, you know, like a coiled spring. We're standing here. <laughs> watching the water like hawks, waiting for this fish to show itself, hoping that if it does, I don't mess the cast up. Fish have started yeah, rising too. again. Suddenly rose again. Yeah, yeah. So one of the observations Peter made a few minutes ago when we were walking around the lake was that everything had stopped moving. There were no rises, whether that was light levels or temperature. Oh, hello, hello. Where are we? Oh, I see him. Coming straight at I you. see him, yeah. God, that's a big fish. Let it sink just a little bit, yeah, and now bring it past come. him. On, there he's, 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 turned, he's turned, he's turned. He's got it! Got him! <laughs> oh my lord! <laughs> wow, that was exciting. That's a big fish, Peter. I'm quite pleased with myself. Yeah, I should think you are. Beautifully cast and intercepted. Good fish spotting. He's coming Come in on. very... Wake up, fish. Wake up. Well, I'm not sure I want to look at the size of this thing. Oh, my Lord, that is enormous. That's a huge thing. Oh. What? <laughs> I'm in shock. I can't <laughs> believe this place. That's a huge rainbow trout. Look at the size of it. Look at the size of its mouth. Come on, fella. Come on, fella. We got yes, it. get in. Unbelievable. Oh, God. That's a huge fish. <laughs> oh, my Lord. Elbow, put it there. That's a fantastic fish. Wow. Oh my lord, that's 15 pounds, isn't it? It's getting up there. <laughs> Do you know, the, the thing I love is that we, you saw that fish like half past nine this morning, 10 o'clock this morning, mm -hmm. showed it to me. We've come back, we've spotted it. We've walked around a couple of times. We've thought our way through getting that take, haven't we? And that, you know, that's just one of the greatest things about <laughs> fishing is to solve the problem. You, you see that and you think, oh, how am I going to get that fish? The fly change. Waited for the light. Waited everything. for the light. This thing is flipping enormous. I've got no other words apart from just wow. I thought that spark tick this morning was special. This thing's huge. It's got to be 15 pounds. An amazing creature and an amazing angling experience to see a fish like this cruising around 
do the old fly swap. I think I'll try something slightly different to see if I can get a take. First cast, past its nose, and it grabbed it. And this is the result. That is going straight in the smoker. That is going to be a stunning addition to the Ford family dinner table, let me tell you. Brilliant. Well, the day's fishing's finished, but I thought we'd wander over here and see what all the fuss is about at Diva because we're by one of the stock ponds, throwing little handfuls of pellets in for some amazing looking trout in here, Peter. I didn't catch the big brownie that I was after. I can't say I'm disappointed because you know what it means? You've got to come back. Yep, indeed. Good. I've got to come back and have another go because I've, I've found today just brilliant and thank you so much. That spark tick trout was one of the most special creatures I think I've ever seen and I'll never forget that as long as I live. And then to catch, you know, to catch two double figure trout in one day's fishing it's just the stuff of absolute dreams, isn't it? Just extraordinary. But when you see fish of this quality in here, and you know they're in there, it doesn't half sharpen your senses. Incredible creatures. That's what people come here for. Yeah. And I'll certainly be back. Thanks ever so much. Good.